Tiki Hut Media. Pop the top on your favorite beer, or whatever you drink, from Tiki Hut Media. This is Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Hey everybody, Jerry here. Welcome into Soul Ramblings podcast for this week. And it's hard to believe it's already the end of June. We're six months into 2022. Where has the year gone? It seems like to me, it's just a couple of weeks ago, it was New Year. And here we are halfway through the year. Before we get into today's episode, wherever you're listening to this episode today, would you take the time to click subscribe? That way you never miss a new episode of Soul Ramblings podcast. Today, we're going to head back over to Manatee Life Church for week three of the I'm In series. And each week, the sermon title begins with the letters I-N. I'm In. And this week, week three, is I'm Influential. God's word for today as you're seated comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 39 through 42. Hear the word of the Lord. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of these, our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, today is a great day to be together, and it was Great uh, fellowshipping a little bit before church this morning and, and talking with a lot of you. A lot of folks in a great mood this morning, lots of smiles on faces as we celebrate the goodness of God and share his word on this Sunday. We're in a message series called I'm In. And week number one, we discovered that I'm invited. Each week starts with the letters I in. I'm invited. Last week, week number two, we talked about how I'm invaluable to God's work. And today, I want to show that we are influential for God's glory. Today, what I really believe that we need is to see ourselves as God sees us, that we are influencers. I believe we're called to be light in this world and to show the love of God day in and day out. I'll give you one statement that you're going to hear a lot over the next few minutes. And I pray that this really sinks into your heart, that you will embrace the reality of this truth. And it's this, that you have no idea how one conversation, one word of encouragement, or one expression of love might change someone's life. Now, it seems to me that culture has kind of hijacked the term influencer. And I'll tell you what I mean by this. I did some research, and I went online. I went to the Googler, and I typed in, what is an influencer? I wanted to see what authors and bloggers and Even dictionaries say about the word influencer. What does that mean? And the very first definition that came up was this. An influencer is an individual who has the power to affect the purchase decisions of others because of their authority, knowledge, or relationship with their audience. And I, when I read that and I reread it, and I thought, Really, is that what an influencer is? Someone who influences purchase decisions because of the number of followers they have on a social media account? Now, I was confused because I know when I was growing up, influencers were people like teachers, coaches, 
I'm a former band nerd. My band director was an influencer. A good friend, a good parent. They were influencers. Sunday school class leaders were influencers. So what I want to try to do today is I want to try to reclaim that word influencer. And I want you to see yourself as an influencer because you have no idea how God could use one word of encouragement, one moment, one expression of love and faith to change someone else's life. Let's reclaim the true meaning of what it means to be an influencer. First of all, I believe that true and lasting influence always starts not with a product or a purchase, but with people. It always starts with people. And the good news is that all of you have people in your sphere of influence that you come in contact with each and every day. You are called to be an influencer. You have no idea what that one word of encouragement might do to influence someone. And here's what I hope you'll understand. Influence isn't always obvious. Influence isn't always instant. If you don't believe that, watch a two- or a three-year-old and how they act. They're reflecting the influence of their parents. We, uh, thank God for technology, we, a while ago, uh, a couple of years ago, my granddaughter video chatted with Beth. She got on the, she was in the car seat in the back and her mom was, driving somewhere, and she got on her iPad, and she video called Beth. And in the midst of that conversation, my precious little three-, four-year-old granddaughter said a word that three- and four-year-olds shouldn't say. I'll just leave it at that. And I peeked around the corner and said, what just came out of my granddaughter's mouth? And Beth got on the video chat with my daughter and said, where might she have learned that language? Influence, right? We influence. Parents are influencers. In fact, I want to show you a story today. This is probably one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture In John chapter 4, we did not read the entire chapter just toward the end of that. And give you some context here, this is a story about a woman that nobody ever thought would have any influence. Jesus is on a trip, he's on a journey, and he was going to pass through Samaria, which was an unusual choice. The disciples surely did not expect him to go there, because Jews did not interact with Samaritan folk, because Samaritans were half Jewish, half Gentile, and the Jews hated the Samaritans. They believed that they were less than human. They were lower than dogs in their minds. So you would never interact with a Samaritan if you were a Jew, and especially not a Samaritan woman. Well, Jesus, as Jesus so often does in the Gospels, he shocks everybody. He sat down by a well in the middle of the day in order to rest. And this Samaritan woman comes up to him and Jesus asks her for a drink. He dignifies her by starting a conversation. She's thrown completely off guard by this. Scripture says in verse 9 of chapter 4, the woman was surprised. She's shocked. She's overwhelmed. She's beside herself. She never expected this. This is unheard of. No Jewish man would ever approach a, a Samaritan woman. It's crazy, weird, bizarre. And she's surprised. She's shocked. For Jews refuse to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied with love. If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. She's curious, she's intrigued, but she's confused. She says, sir, but you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. How can you get water? And Jesus replies in verse 13, he says, 
Anyone who drinks of this water, this natural water, will soon be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water I give will never be thirsty again. The, the woman notices something different about this guy. She says, please, sir, may I have some living water? And Jesus says in verse 16, go and get your husband. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you've had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly have spoken the truth, sir, she said. You must be a prophet. There wasn't a Jewish man anywhere who would have interacted with this woman. But Jesus approaches her with love in his heart, and he dignifies her and honors her, all the time knowing that she was an outcast in her own community. Divorced five times and now shacking up? That raised some eyebrows in today's world. And in that day and age, she would have and was shunned. She would have been the woman that everybody whispered, stay away from her. Oh, keep your husband away from her. She's nothing but bad news. And Jesus, knowing all that, doesn't look at her as an immoral woman, but instead as a miracle waiting to happen, knowing that a touch from heaven could completely change her heart. And it dawns on her, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've heard that there would be a Messiah coming. I've heard perhaps about this man that's been doing miracles, raising the dead, opening blind eyes. Why would a Jewish man speak to me, show me honor and respect, and know everything about my life? But wait a minute. Maybe this is the one we have been waiting for. This is the one that we've been praying for. Perhaps this is the Messiah. And she leaves her water, runs back to the village. And the Bible says it directly. The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everybody, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So what happened? The people came streaming from the village to see Jesus. So what do we see in this powerful story? Well, first of all, no matter how bad your life is messed up, you're not too far gone for the love of Jesus to reach into your life. Then we see the town outcast, the one that everybody else would whisper about going in and enthusiastically telling people this may be the one. The broken woman, the messed up woman, the woman everybody whispers about, the one that has been called the immoral woman, immediately becomes an influencer. Her story shows us that you don't have to have it all together to influence somebody else toward Jesus. You don't have to know it all. You don't have to have a seminary degree. You don't have to pray powerful prayers or know book, chapter, and verse of every word in the Bible. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. She didn't. You don't have to have all the things fixed in your life to be an influence. You just have to know who Jesus is and care about the people around you. And you can immediately be a light in this world and salt to those around you. You just have to care about people. You need to care about one person who's right there in front of you. Because you are an influencer. You're an influencer. Listen, you have no idea how one word of encouragement, one word of hope, one expression of love might influence someone toward Jesus. So this woman goes back to the village and tells everybody. And the disciples came back to Jesus, and they were hungry. And that part of the story always seemed funny to me because my wife will tell you I seem to be always hungry. <laughs> They said, Jesus, have you eaten? And Jesus kind of goes spiritual on them, and he says, my food is to do the will of God. Then he said this. He said, the field is ripe for harvest. 
he uses a farming metaphor here. And the harvest was always about changed lives. He said the field is ripe for harvest, but the laborers are few. For our purpose, we could say it this way. Listen, church. The field is ripe for harvest, but the influencers are few. It always starts with a person right in front of you because you are an influencer. You're an influencer. This woman goes back to her town, tells everybody. Next part of the story says this, where we started with our scripture reading this morning in verse 39. It says, many of the Samaritans. That statement alone would have been so shocking that anybody would believe that one Samaritan would believe. But many Samaritans came to faith in Christ because this one woman had influence. One unlikely woman who said, Jesus told me everything I did. When they came out to see Jesus, they begged him to stay in their village. And so he stayed for two days. Long enough for many more to hear this message and believe. So who did God use? Not some Facebook or Instagram star. Not a professional athlete. Not a celebrity. Not a content creator. Not somebody influencing purchase decisions for some product. But a regular, ordinary, everyday broken, sinful woman who had been transformed by Jesus Christ. You have influence exactly where you are. You don't have to have your whole life together to be an influencer. Please feel this, church. You are an influencer. You have no idea what one word of encouragement, one expression of love can mean to someone who needs a very small touch of God's love. So when you greet people, when they come to church and help someone who's uncomfortable and nervous, just feel the love, you're an influencer. When you listen to someone who's hurting at work and you represent the love of Jesus by not judging where they are, but loving them simply because they are, you're an influencer. When you post a scripture or repost a sermon clip, You could influence someone on the other side that you don't even know, on the other side of that screen. It happened to me this past week. A fellow I work with, we're friends on Facebook as well as friends in the workplace. And he got on Facebook, he liked a couple of the posts that I had. Didn't think much of it. He came up to me a few days ago and he said, I just want to tell you that I read your posts each and every day. And I had posted earlier this week, I had posted a scripture. And he said, I'd never really noticed that scripture before, and I needed it that day. Thank you. I had no idea that would have that impact. No idea. Was it a Did I have thousands and thousands of people liking my post? No. But God used a scripture that came to my heart that I posted to speak to one person. Does that life matter? You better believe it does. Just by the way you worship, by the way you carry yourself, by who you are and whose you are, you not only can be an influence, you are an influence. If you know Jesus... You are salt and you are light. Let your salt do what salt does and let your light shine because God has created you to influence others to the love of Jesus Christ. You are an influencer. Let's pray. Father, we ask that by the power of your son Jesus that we would see ourselves, God, as you see us. God, we pray today that there are those who couldn't walk out of the building they're in or shut the computer they're watching on. Whatever it is, God, they couldn't even move to their next step without being an influence to someone else, without a word of encouragement, without an expression of hope. God, we pray that we would be incredibly sensitive 
to the gentle nudges of your spirit that would interrupt us and we would gladly be interrupted to let the light shine into the place of darkness. God, every moment of every day, we're available to you. We want to influence God. Just because we don't see the immediate result doesn't mean, God, that you didn't use the seed that was planted. Help us, O oh God, to be faithful to you. We don't have to have it all together. We just have to love the people in front of us, God. Use us as your church, invited and valuable and influential, because this is our story. This is our song, praising our Savior all the day long. God, all for your glory, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, be sure to check Manatee Life Church out at their new website, our new website. It's manatealife.church, manatealife.church. Got a link in the show notes of this episode. Check out our church over there. And if you're ever in the Bradenton, Florida area on vacation this summer, love to have you come join us on Sunday mornings at 1030 Eastern. You can also live stream those services every Sunday morning, 1030 Eastern. As always, I want to thank you for the gift and the privilege of your time today. I know there's a lot of podcasts, new ones coming out all the time, a lot of podcasts out there you could spend your time listening to, and I really, really do appreciate you spending your time with us today. And I always end with my favorite verse of scripture. I've had several people ask me, why do you say that same thing at the end of every episode? <laughs> well, it's actually from the Phillips translation of the New Testament, and it's my favorite verse in all of scripture. It's Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Here's the last piece of advice. If you believe in goodness and if you value the approval of God, fix your minds on whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and praiseworthy. Until next week, when we wrap up the I'm In series, it'll be week four, I'm Invested, so be sure to join us then. I'm Jerry Wicker. Keep the conversation going. Drink responsibly. Grace, peace, cheers. cheers. Thanks for listening to Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Download new episodes every week. And if you haven't already, subscribe and be sure to leave us a rating and review. Soul Ramblings is a Tiki Hut Media production. Mm-hmm.